Hello, and uh, welcome to today's talk. Um, got a couple of, of issues here, but uh, the main thing that I'm going to be talking about that I'd like to share are the um, upcoming rules for version 3. Um, not too many surprises, but there are a couple uh, of changes that uh, we should be aware of. Um, of course, it may change before it uh, it fi it drops for for real. Um, I was going to share a couple thoughts about uh, some more things that page one gives supporters, and also share some photos of my um, my adventure here into this new world of one page rules. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the. Um, the rules. Basically, they're going to be the same, uh, at least the basic rules. You know, you're, you still have activating, um, alternative activations. Uh, everything runs the same. There's nothing different about the sequencing of the rules. And that's what's uh, interesting. It's very unusual because when you uh, have been playing Flames of War, Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy, um, other games, when they come out with a new version, you expect wholesale changes. You expect something big, something really um, strong about the rules that's going to change. It's going to it's going to change the feel of the game. Version three, I do not get that sense. Maybe I, I miss something, and I really do wish when they uh, make these copies, they put in red the changes from the last edition, just so we can spot things instead of reading everything over the entire time. So if anybody from One Page Rules is listening, please, um, when you go to version 3, make sure any changes are in red. So we know anything that's not in red will, uh, um, will be the same. Um, if there's any anything that's eliminated, put it in blue or, or something else so we know that that's no or you know it's crossed out so that we know okay that's an old rule that's gone and uh there's there's a couple like this um not in the the basic rules now in the advanced rules i haven't checked the advanced rules there may be some differences but the basic rules there's just really clarifications rewording uh they're i think they're trying to bring all the games into an alignment and i've just looked at the uh the fantasy, or actually really the grimdark uh, future rules. I haven't looked at the firefight and the skirmish for fantasy just yet, nor have I taken a look at the regiments. But um, I'm taking a look at the grimdark future right now, and the only things that I really see that are different in the basic rules is that they clarified uh, line of sight, you know, uh, if you want to use different alternatives to... Uh, genuine line of sight. There's there's a couple things in there that they have ideas that, that you can decide to play. Um, but really it's just clarifications of the old rules, of, of the version 2 rules. What is changing, however, are the special rules. Uh, and it, it's not a lot. Most of them are the same. But there's a couple that have really changed a lot. And the one that I really like, or, I mean... It, Maybe when I play it, I'll hate it, but right now it looks like a really good decision. And that's to, instead of having psychers and wizards, they're just called casters. And if you ever played um, Star Wars, the miniature game, you know, a few years back, and you played Jedi, you will recognize this system where you have points and you, you use a certain amount of points to cast a spell. And uh, each of the spells, you have a list of spells just like before, where you have uh, two easy ones, two medium ones, and two hard ones. And every faction has its own set of spells, although there is some overlap. You know, the basic easy spell where you do three AP1 damage, or AP three, eight, three hits for AP1, uh, that's an easy spell. And uh, it's, I think, a little bit more streamlined. Uh, I like the old system, but you could tell like it, it was a, uh, it was more of an afterthought than, 
a, you know, a system change or a system idea here. They just wanted to put it in there just to have it. And I noticed that a lot of the armies were very similar. Now there's a little bit more diversity from what I'm seeing in these rules so far. Uh, so basically, uh, in order to, in, before, if you rolled, uh, if you had a wizard one, you rolled a die, and the easy spells were three or better, the medium spells were four or better, and the hard spells were five or better to go off. And if you're lucky enough to have a wizard two, then then it's you need two, three, four instead for the, the spells to go off. Now it's a straight up four. No matter what spell, no matter how difficult the spell is, you just need to roll a four. You get it or you don't. The difference is, is that you now have a certain amount of caster points. So the level of your wizard is how much he replenishes these points. So if you have a, you know, now there's, I don't know if I saw wizard one or caster one, but I've seen caster twos and caster threes. So at the beginning of the turn, you get two, if you have a caster two, you get two points. The cheapest spells are two points. So on the first turn, you can only cast the easiest of the spells. And that's if you're a wizard two. If you're a wizard three, you can cast the medium spell because they're three points. And then the tough spells are four. So you got to um, save some of your spell points in order to cast those bigger spells. They have to go on later in the game. And you can only do them a certain amount of times. And uh, so a wizard, and before you can only try once per per wizard. But now if you have the points, you can unload them and you can cast as many as you want. Um, and what's interesting is that you can spend points if you're within certain range, instead of trying to block a spell, you can hinder it or enhance it. So for instance, if you're going for a, uh, a spell, no matter how what the cost is, and you need a four up, <clears throat> the enemy has a wizard nearby and he spends a point. Now you have to get a five up. That's if I'm reading the rules correctly. Let me take a look here. Um, yeah. So you have to be within 18 inches, but if you have a second wizard within range, you can buff it back up to four. And if you if that wizard wants to spend a second point now, it's three. From At least that's what I'm reading here. And uh, if anybody knows uh, a little bit better, uh, check it out. Uh, just correct me on this. But what it doesn't say is... I don't see the model and other, ca oh yeah, so the model and other casters within 18 inches may spend any number of tokens at the same time to give the caster plus one, minus one to the casting roll. So if you've got a wizard that has five tokens and you put on a, a cheap spell for two, you still got three tokens and you could throw two tokens in there and instead of a four up, you just need a two up for the spell to go off. And uh, so you can influence how difficult the spell is going to be by how many points you want to sink into this this particular spell. So I think what that's going to do, the reason why I like it, is that it's going to encourage people to go for those big spells. And there's a couple of big ones in there that are, are really good. I think I saw one where you, you force the, um, I think like the entire unit has to take a dangerous terrain check or uh, gets, you know, I forget what it was, they get all hit or, they, you know, two up to hit or something. It was a really cool spell. It was, it was a um, a mob destroyer. So, you know, all those mobs of 20, 20 uh, models, they're in trouble with that that particular spell. So it it got me a little bit more excited to put in wizards. Before it was saying, you know, if I get a psyker or a wizard, that's kind of cool that I could do it. Now I think wizards can have a bigger impact. I don't think they're going to have as much of an impact because it's not like you get a free spell every turn and you see what you can see what happens each turn. Now you saving up your your you're kind of building up your power and stronger, stronger, and then bam, you send some big spell down there. So it I think it's gonna be a hit. I think uh the caster new caster rules are, are looking really good. Some people are gonna be upset because some of the other rules, uh, a couple of the, these others are gonna be changed. I think uh Furious is going to be different. Uh, instead of getting plus one attack, you have to roll a, a six, I think. Let's see. Um, when you charge, you deal one extra hit when you um, you roll a six. 
Uh, so Furious, I think, is getting nerfed. Um, Phalanx is gone, at least from the Grimdark, and it's been replaced by Counter. And instead of forcing them to do a uh, dangerous terrain, instead, if, if you charge somebody with Counter, with i.e. Spears, it gets reversed that the Spearmen get to attack first. And I think that makes more sense, even though it's more powerful, I think. Um, it makes more sense because you charge somebody, those spears are going to hit you first. So I think that's, that's a, a, a much more cinematic way to look at the rule. And uh, people were getting upset about some of these changes, that their favorite units are going to not be as effective and some are going to be more effective. I mean, why would you charge spearmen now? I mean, people didn't want to charge spearmen before, uh, but now I think it's more fair but what people have to understand is that all these all these armies are getting repointed, so they're they're going to make the furious ones cheaper and probably the counter ones a little bit more expensive, um, especially the ones that have a higher attack value. Because usually the spearmen they have five attack, so that's not that's not a lot, and, and the AP isn't usually very high, so. Um, yeah, so the spearmen got really good, and the halberdiers, the um, the rending. I like the uh, the uh, new rule much better now because I would. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at the alien hives. I'm just taking serrated swords instead of the rending swords uh, because they they give a four armor piercing right off the bat, whereas rending is just one, and then maybe if you roll a six. You, you get an AP4 on that one hit. The, the difference was, the only thing I was sacrificing with the serrated blades is that I, uh, your regeneration is gonna work, whereas with the rending, regeneration didn't work. But here now with the rending, it's a little bit more stable, and it, I'm gonna start picking rending a lot more because uh, the regeneration it, uh, when you roll a six, it just gives you AP four now. However, no matter what, and, and let me look it up here, um, the enemies taking hits from weapons with rending get minus one to their regeneration rolls and it says nothing about you have to roll a six for that. Now, regeneration is usually five up. So that means you, you're forcing them to roll sixes on the regeneration, which does make a huge difference, at least for me. And the fact that it's going to happen on all the hits is much better um, than only on the sixes. So it's a much more stable rule. Uh, a little nerf, but nerf in a good way. I think it's it, it cancels out. And I honestly think it's, a, it's better. But we'll see how they point it out. So uh, there's a couple other... Uh, changes that I, I notice, I think with poison, the old poison rule was whenever you roll an unmodified hit result of six, that hit is multiplied by three. So I didn't think that was such a big deal, and uh, it didn't feel like poison. You know, that sounds weird, but uh, now the new rule is that um, if you uh, if you take if you get a hit from weapons with poison, you have to re-roll your successful defense rolls of six. So if somebody's rolling and they roll a six, they got to roll those sixes again to see if they get through. So um, that sounds more like poison. And I think that's a, a much more cinematic. So that was really good uh, that I noticed. There's a couple other changes. I think Lance was something that changed instead of being an automatic you know, um, hit. It's a AP you get uh, AP plus two, um, let's see, on the charge, and impact. Impact has changed. Instead of being an automatic hit, now um, you have to roll a two or better to get those impact hits. So you might lose some of those impact hits. So the impact got nerfed a little bit. Um, so it's impact X, and X is how many attacks you get with two up. So that that's... Uh, a couple of changes. I think they make more sense, and uh, I like them. 
So I'm interested to see how the uh, armies flesh out, what kind of spells everybody's going to be getting, and what the points are going to be looking at. All right, uh, the next thing I wanted to uh, mention, and I thought it was really cool that uh, when you're a Patreon supporter, uh, you get these things. Let's see, let me go back. They call them free gifts. And uh, so you get stuff like this if you're tier two. And really, they're, they're just demos. They give you a, a sample model for you to, um, from other companies. And this is antithetical to the normal business model. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's uh, pretty, pretty neat that um, they do that. That they, you know, one page rules. It's really neat that they promote other companies, uh, their products, because it really enhances. I, I, if I read this correctly, these are new factions that they're introducing from a totally different company from One Page Rules. They're making these models. They're making their own storyline, um, their own stats. They're using the points from because if you uh, are a Patreon supporter, you can make up your own um your own units. So that's really cool. And so it's really nice to get these models, put them into your army, however you want. And uh, it just makes it fun, it makes it fun. You, you get all these models basically for free as you're, you're doing it. Uh, so that's another benefit of being in the one page rules fold. All right, so these are, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. No, okay, that's it. So this is my uh, 3D printer, uh, just a FDM, Elegoo. And uh, this was the first model that, that I had um, uh, set up. And yeah, so these models, I think they came out great. Yeah, you got to clean up some stuff. There's a little bit of stringing, a couple of things that you uh, just make. But once you put paint on it, it really is not. You could see some of the lines here that you wouldn't see with resin. But honestly, I'm, I'm seeing them now in the picture, but I don't notice them uh, while I'm painting. And definitely while I'm playing, I don't notice. A friend of mine printed this out. I was in the middle of uh, painting this. It's not nearly done, but... Um, yeah, I got a flamer going there. And uh, what's great about um, 3D printing is that this was my life before, just thrown in a bucket, and now I printed something that uh, keeps all my paints in order. They're not rolling around, falling all over the place. It's great. Uh, here's a snatcher. And you see that it, it comes out really good. Uh, yeah, you could see the lines if you really look, but honestly, it, it doesn't show up to the naked eye. Um, and you just clean up a little bit of the strings, little stuff down there, and it's fine. You know, a little string here. Um, still got to work with the supports to get them right. You could see here this tail didn't come out right. Um, that was unfortunate. And somebody lost an arm. And here's a misprint. So that's that's the missing arm there. It uh, didn't quite print because I didn't get the uh, the supports right. There it is again. It's uh, got one arm. No hand there. And part of the blade, it didn't put the supports on right. So once I get the supports going... And then here again, I messed up the shield and this area here. Um, and then this was a, a game that Dan and I were playing. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to start doing battle reports. But my, my guys aren't totally painted yet. So this is another thing that I printed with my 3D printer to... Um, hold my models while and this is some because I got I had one of these but it was really annoying to take the model off put it on it's really nice to put them on here and then have something because if if I put it down it better be stable otherwise it's tipping over and a model is breaking here you got the holder and it holds all these handles 
And uh, another great thing about 3D printing that is a big benefit. And then I was making a storage tray for my minis. It's, uh, it's got shelves that I slide this into. So yeah, um, 3D printing is a really, really fun hobby. It, it, it's already made my quality of life go way up so that uh, I can organize all my miniatures and um, display them in a way that I want to, uh, set up my paint, set up my, uh, my painting station. And uh, it's, it's really cool. Right now I'm working on terrain while I'm painting up my uh, miniatures. Uh, I got a thousand point alien hives army in addition to any battle brothers and high elf fleets that I have. I got about a thousand high elf and about 3,000 battle brothers. So um, yeah, that's another cool thing about this, this uh, one page rules. Use your old models. Who cares? You know, that that's why they put those those things in there. So I hope you enjoyed my little uh, slideshow, and uh, happy gaming.